As we've looked over the last few weeks, we've talked about the early years of Christ. We talked about how he was, even from at eight days old, he was circumcised because of tradition and because of customs. Then age 12, he was presented to the temple to be this, for a decision to be made whether he would continue on to follow after a, you know, one of the leaders of the Pharisees or he would separate himself at that point in his life. We know that Christ was a great teacher. We know that he was a great leader. Now we also know all the story of Christ. But this morning my goal is to try to get us to really take a second and focus for just one minute why Christ did this. See, we don't know much about the life of Christ between the age of 12 to the time of age 30. There are a lot of uh, stories out there that are, have been proven to be not true. But there are different things out there who have, who have tried to distract us from the reality of who Christ really is. See, Christ is God. He is God who took man form. The way I like to express that Christ was literally the outward projection of the heart of God. For God so loved that he gave and he gave his heart through his son Christ. And so at this point in time, we don't know anything other than those blurb of moments in time to where we heard a story of Christ in an encounter in the temples. But then all of a sudden, there's, there's another person who came on the scene named John. We know him as John the Baptist. John was one who was actually cousins to Jesus. Now, the interesting thing is, is we, we don't know if John and Christ hung out any of his kids. We don't know. But there was one encounter prior to the birth of Christ to where John and Jesus came together. Remember the story when the mothers came together that John the Baptist literally leaped within the womb of his mother to be in the presence of God. Even a child in the womb of a mother, literally it was so excited to be in the presence of Christ. We know now that John was the forerunner. He would go to the voice crying out in the wilderness. He was out trying to lead people to a true understanding, a conversion from the Jewish faith and to this new movement. Now, the interesting thing to me was with the fact that how did John even know? What was the plan? He had no clue. All he knew was he was in the presence of God. And he wanted to tell the world about it. And then all of a sudden, one day, when John was about his, his normal routine of life, he was baptizing people on a regular basis. Now, the interesting thing was he was baptizing people in areas that were considered unclean. The rivers and lakes that were being used were not those that a, a, a dignified person would have ever used to cleanse themselves. But here he was about his regular day. And then all of a sudden, he looks up. Oh, man, I get so excited about this because all of a sudden there's Jesus. John gets so excited. He says, behold, the Lamb of God. Oh, folks, <laughs> we have the joy and privilege that know that the Holy Spirit wants to dwell within us. And every day have communion with us. John saw Jesus, became so excited because of the fact that he knew there was more to come. Behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away our sins. Oh, man, I might get to shouting this morning. He encountered God. He saw him there. Now, let me ask this question. He then is encountered with a, a struggle <laughs> because Jesus now comes out and says, John, I want you to baptize me. Oh. Time out. Penalty on the flag. Whoa. You want me to baptize you. You are the son of God. You have no sin in your life. You have no, un, no part of your life that's considered unrighteous. Why would you ever? Why would you ever want to be baptized? Have you ever wondered that? Man, I've struggled with that one so many times. 
Throughout my life, I've looked and said, God, why? Why was this moment in time so important? And one day he told me, he said, because I wanted to be with you guys. I wanted to be like you. I wanted to dwell within you. I wanted to be accepted by you. See, God had no sin. Christ had no sin. But he longed to be in relationship with us. And the fulfillment of all things that we considered righteous, this was part of it. Now, let me explain something a little bit here. We're going to get a little lesson in what customs and manners. See, up to this point in time, baptism was only reserved for those people who were Gentiles who eventually converted over to Judaism. And at that point in time, they then had to baptize themselves. Now they had a ritual they had to follow. And they had to be baptized into that religion. And the whole idea of the baptism was saying that I'm coming from one type of faith I'm surrendering that type of faith and now accepting this new type of faith. That was the only use of baptism. And the person would have to baptize himself and then baptize his entire household. Symbolizing that everything he had was now going to be there. But see, that was the only reason for baptism. Huh. Interesting. Jesus was actually teaching us something in this moment in time. See, through his whole life, he was living under the law, and then at age 30. Now, how many remember last week I said something was important at the age 30? Anyone remember that? It's a quick little thing. I was kind of playing around with you to see if you'd catch it. At the age 30, a normal Jewish leader would become authorized to now present truth. See, we, 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 the kids become adults at age 12. And they continue to learn, but they are not allowed to teach anything of truth until the age of 30. As a matter of fact, if you look at them, when they, the different leaders of the church, the Pharisees, the Sat, whatever they were, they would not be allowed to be labeled as a leader until age 30. And at what age did Christ get baptized? 30. He was making a point at this time, talking about a new truth. The fact that Christ himself, the Son of God, was taking on and being baptized and entering into a new truth. He was teaching us something here. Like I said, customs taught that when one person was baptized, they were coming from one thing and joining something new. So Christ went out. John, like I said, was struggling with this dilemma. Lord, I'm not even worthy to candle, carry your sandals, let alone baptize you. I could not even fathom the idea of baptizing Jesus. But Christ was very clear and said, let it be. Let it be done. So now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. See, Jesus was giving us an example. He knew what we would encounter. He knew our lives. He knew us. He knew what we needed to learn. Now, isn't it amazing how God is so perfect in everything he's done that he orchestrated the word of God to be perfect for us? Have you ever gone through a situation in your life and flipped over to Psalm and begin to read and all of a sudden you're going, wow, that's me right there. God is perfect. He knew and knows what we need. But see, the thing is, why did Jesus do this? Why did Jesus even come? That song said it all. He came because people need the Lord. We were lost without hope. You are a Gentile generation where we had no hope of salvation. But God, longing in his heart, wanted to be in relationship with us, wanted to dwell with us, wanted to be part of us, wanted us to be part of him so desperately that he poured out his heart to his son, Jesus, who was born perfectly, lived perfectly, died 
with all of our sins on him. He had such a desperation for the lost. He longed with everything that he was to see them come to know the truth. He started his ministry being baptized in what legalistically would be considered an unclean event. He was announcing to the world that there is something that you are a part of now. I am going to give you a new option. He was baptized. John put him under the water and he came up. <laughs> it was so amazing to me. Because when he came up, the heavens opened up. A moment in time, God himself announced to the world, to John, to every person standing around that day, heard the voice of God fulfill a prophecy when he said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. Do you realize that at that moment in time, the Trinity was in existence. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit was present to celebrate the baptism of Jesus. The statement, this is my beloved Son, is a quotation from Psalm 2-7, with whom I am well pleased, from Isaiah 42-1. Fulfillment of the coming Messiah. The Jewish people knew it. Could you imagine the ripples that ripped through the community, when they heard God declare that this is my son. Jesus was baptized to declare a truth to us, a truth to the world, that this is the son of God. We see the fact that when he was, <laughs> you know, the very next thing we see in Scripture was Jesus was tempted. So many times we as Christians, we get saved. And the very next thing we're facing is a temptation. A struggle. Oh, we get angry with God. Why is it I come to know you? I come to trust you. Why do you allow this to happen to me? The very first thing that Jesus faced was the temptation. The world's going to try to deter us from the truth. I shared a week or two ago about the idea that even Christ being born, Herod tried to kill him. Truth entered the world. The world does not like the truth. We live in a generation where truth is how you feel about something. I'm sad to tell the world that there is an absolute truth and His name is Jesus Christ. That one day every knee will declare, every tongue will confess that we shall stand one day and you'll hear one of two things. If you don't believe in truth, one day you will. I just hope it's not too late. The reality is, is Jesus was teaching us that we have to make a choice. We have to make a decision to follow God or to follow our own way. We have to make a choice. Christ himself was baptized as a representation to us. He didn't need to be baptized. He only did it to be part of us. Think about this just for a moment. I, I just, so many times I, I, I don't have words to express the depth of what we're dealing with. God desires with everything that he is for you. He desires you. He desires you just as you are. He wants you now. He doesn't need you to clean yourself up first. He doesn't want you to follow some ritual. He just wants you. That's how much he loves us. He's willing to accept the saints and the sinners. You know what? There's really no difference between a saint and a sinner. The only difference is the grace of God. 
The fact is, we are all sinners at one time. We all struggle. But by the grace of God. Now, in a few weeks, I'll be announcing it, that we're going to have a baptism service. Because, to me, Scripture is pretty clear about some things. It says that if we believe in our heart and profess with our mouth, then we are saved. Matthew 28, 19, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them that everything in the eye commanded, and surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Mark 16, 15 through 16, he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. I'm not saying that the act of baptism is the salvation moment. But what I am declaring is that when Jesus started his ministry, he said, you know what? From this day forward, I am dying to my own will. I am about the Father's will from this day forward. At age 30, he began to declare the beginning of his ministry to a world around us. Baptism is a public profession saying, I am sold out to God now. Completely every part of me is sold out to God. When we put you under the water, it's a symbol of the water death, the death of yourself. We bring you up as a new creation. Folks, <laughs> this is exciting. You know, I remember when I was baptized. It wasn't in a river. It wasn't in a baptistry. I was baptized in an old feeding trough. Big metal feeding trough. And you know what? The Holy Spirit worked there too. I wanted to declare to the world that I was a child of God. That I wanted to die to myself completely. And I wanted to be with God. Christ teaches us an example here. He tells us, listen, <laughs> if, it's, if Christ did it, do you not think we need to really think about it? Just a crazy thought, preacher thinking here. But if Jesus gave us the example, I think there's some importance to it. And now sometimes I'll tell you this too. Sometimes some people come back and want to be baptized again. That's okay. Because sometimes people want to say, I, you know, first time, this time I'm ready. I'm ready. But this morning, like I said, my goal isn't so much to teach about the act of baptism. My goal is to teach why Christ did it. Why did he do it? He did it because he loved us. Everything that Christ did throughout his entire life it was because he loved us. He longed to be in relationship with us. He desired to... I can imagine the heart of Christ just wanted to be with every person. I can imagine that Christ himself, if he lived in our day and age today, his heart would be broken. He'd be broken over the lost. I think in some form he'd be broken over the churches too. Why do we do what we do? Christ did it because he loves us. We need to do it because we love him. How many truly understand the idea that God loves you? In our day and age, we have so many people in depression and anxiety who have a difficulty understanding how someone could love them. We see an increase in teenage suicides because they don't have enough self-confidence. They've not learned how to be loved. They can't understand how somebody can love them and their imperfections. In our day and age, we're seeing more and more we hear people joining other cults and religions because they felt loved. God knows He loves each and every one of us. The problem is so many times we don't believe it. We tend to understand, think ourselves, well, how could God? 
Jesus loved us so much. He loved us so much that he desired, even from a babe in a manger to an eight-day-old being circumcised to be part of us, to be accepted, to a 12-year-old who was presented to the, God, the temple to make decisions for him. He chose not to go the way of wealth and fame. He chose to go home and continue to live in poverty. He chose to be baptized. Folks, this is a God that loves you. We know the rest of the story. We know that one day, approximately three years later, the same God who started in this Baptist, baptistry moment, who was declared to the world that this is the Son of God, would be mocked, would be beaten, would be crucified. He would weigh upon himself the sins of all mankind. A love so great that he bore the sins to the point that his father could not look upon him again. He died on Calvary. When he started his ministry, his father celebrated. When he finished his ministry, his father cried for us. Are we such a proud people that we can't humble ourselves before God? The one that loves us, the one that desires us. But see, the picture wasn't over when he died. Because now the Holy Spirit, God, who was present in the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, ascended upon us on the day of Pentecost, is available to us today. All we have to do is say, yes, Lord. I believe that the Spirit's moving. We're going to have our musicians come up. We celebrated Christmas not too long ago. We talked about a new year. We talked about the reason why Christ did what he did. And this morning, I guess in a way, we're ending the series. But I want us to understand that with God, it never ends. His love is perfect. It's never ending. He's not expecting you to do A, B, and C before you come to know him. He wants you just as you are. He wants you with all your imperfections. Remember, he carried those sins to the cross for you. He wants you to be in love with him. That's all you ask. To be in love with a God who loved us so much. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? That's what he's looking for. I know the last few weeks we've done a few altar calls. I can't end this service because... If God is calling you, we're going to have a baptism service in a few weeks. But this morning, I want you to make a decision to come and find Christ. And you know what? I don't even care if you've been saved your whole life. This morning, maybe, you want to become so transparent with God and say, Lord, I have been living this life with this mask on. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of living a life that's not pleasing to you. Will you forgive me? The ball's in your court. The Holy Spirit's here. And he's tugging on the hearts of some people this morning. I don't care if somebody, you guys have heard me say this before. I don't care if you fear someone's going to judge you because if they judge you, they're going to have to deal with me. This is an opportunity between you and God now.
No one else matters. Doesn't matter if your mom's here and you're worried about her thinking that you, she's going to celebrate with you. I guarantee that. The choice is yours. I'm not going to play on emotion long. We're going to sing a song. I'm not going to ask that you do. You know what? If we can't have faith in God enough to stand up in front of this crowd, you're never going to stand up in front of the world. So if you want to sing with us, sing with us. The words probably won't be on the screen, but it's okay. They are? Okay. Feel free to sing with us. The altars are open.